वेलकम टू ए टी सी एम द एमरजेंसी मेडिसिन चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ए पेशेंट हु हैड कम विथ टेम्पररी लॉस ऑफ वीकनेस फॉर शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन विल स्टार्ट ए सेवेंटी ईयर ओल्ड मैन एज मैन केम टू द एमरजेंसी रिपोर्टिंग दैट द पेशेंट हैड ए वीकनेस इन द राइट अपर लिम फॉर लास्ट ट्वेंटी मिनट्स so on arrival uh, initial assessment primary survey was clear when patient was having uh, airway patent with breathing of uh, respirate 18 per minute with saturation 99% with bp of 130 by 80 and uh, pulse rate of 72 per minute mm. and he was having full gcs and pupils bilateral equally reactive and uh, at on arrival to the hospital the bilateral power uh, he was moving all four limbs uh, mm. with uh, exposure uh, like uh, grbs of 125 mg per dl okay okay initial on uh, the primary survey had no any interventions we have taken so by ECG. the time patient came to our er a patient symptoms has resolved resolved okay, okay. the patient had uh, been, uh, on for adjunct to the primary survey we had taken an ecg ecg was showing uh, uh, af with controlled ventricular rate of 72 beats per minute okay uh, and uh, the in the abg was no any acid based disorder mm. that is the uh, presentation ma'am coming mm. to the sample history mm. patient uh, has so um, this patient had sim- uh, weakness of the uh, right upper limb mm. for 20 minutes by the time patient came he it has completely resolved we took an ecg it is showing af yeah. so um, can you consider it as a taa uh, we should consider because the mm. in, uh, in af patients usually develop uh, embolic strokes so it can be considered as um, tia since there is af there is high risk of a stroke so uh, we can consider it as a tia mm-hmm. okay uh, what what uh, how will a tia manifest what is a tia tia like uh, definition was tia is uh, transient ischemic attack is defined as any focal neurological deficit mm. uh, which is resolving within the 24 hours mm. is the previous uh, time based definition mm. because of being uh, defined as 24 hour duration and lots of mris showing uh, dwi aspect as infarcted this definition right now is disregarded mm. we are defining ti as uh, focal neurological deficit without any infarcted biological tissue infarcted okay so uh, it will be a transient ischemia uh, um, uh, ischemia won't be there transient loss of oxygenation to that part of the area so which all arteries can be involved the basic uh, anterior cerebral main ah uh, this arteries of the brain uh, that is applying to the uh, mm-hmm. cerebrum then retinal arteries yes. and also the spinal cord Some arteries right. all these th- arteries uh, if any of these arteries uh, is flow, is ab- flow is obstructed for a short period of time then that is a transient and ischemic, ischemic attack. attack so um, uh, how can the manifestations be there can be like depending on the arterial supply the there can hmm. be the complete uh, that artery which are a part supplying there will be neurological deficits or only so single presentation like mm-hmm. only diplopia or hearing loss one sided mm-hmm. hearing loss even uh, no it is um, either typical or atypical ah, ah, typical okay. what are the typical taa symptoms unilateral weakness with uh, slurring mm-hmm. of speech with absent speech uh, slurring we am um, slurring of speech is there then hemianopia hemianopia dysarthria uh, aphasia um, dysarthria is actually atypical okay. um, unilateral symmetrical weakness if it is there of the face then unilateral weakness, weakness of the upper uh-huh. limb then unilateral weakness of the lower limb then uh, how many any hemianopia hemianopia of the eyes uh, uh, that means it is a complete loss of vision if it is blurring of vision it will be uh, a typical Atypic. taa mm, it should be complete loss of vision then isolated disarthria Oh, uh, uh, dysarthria sometimes it can be typical sometimes it can be atypical, atypical. vertigo then, um vertigo dizziness uh, ataxia these things are considered atypical right. typically is facial then facial asymmetry arm asymmetry limb asymmetry and the eyes, eyes. okay mm-hmm. uh, okay next coming to the history of the patient patient suppose uh, suppose you are shifting uh, you are uh, your neighbor is having the symptom and you are shifting this patient from um, the home mm-hmm. to the hospital uh, what Uh, pre hospital stroke uh, screening will you do fast no fast screening okay fast how is it so we, uh, that time uh, the onset is just 
that a few minutes mm. we don't know whether it is taa or a stroke mm. so uh, we need to know whether it is a stroke or not mm. so what will what is the screen the fast what Fa- what all things will you do Fa- in fast uh, we see if uh, like yes fast is for um, face Fa- Fa- face facial deviation then mm. arm many weakness mm. with the t is for time s is for speech mm. if any of these are there like uh, we define like f- facial asymmetry or any arm weakness or speech difficulty mm. and uh, like as fast as t is for the time duration immediately reach the hospital like. okay uh, other uh, so uh, this thing is there then uh, cincinnati scoring is there. what all things are checked in that in that also uh, Next. six things are checked, checked in cincinnati checked. score we need to check the age if age is more than 45 there is a high risk of stroke then we need to check whether the glucose uh, glucose level of the patient if the glucose level is between 60 and 600 then that means mm-hmm. it is somewhat in a normal range and there is a high risk of stroke then there shouldn't be any baseline weakness for the patient baseline patient should be an active patient mm-hmm. and another thing is patient should not have any seizures okay mm-hmm. and the symptoms should be uh, duration of symptoms if it is like more than 24 hours and all it should be considered as significant mm-hmm. and asymmetrical weakness of the arm mm-hmm. or the face or the lower limbs or the eye okay and uh, initially the such presentations we need to differentiate with the stroke mimics mm. which were which are the stroke mimics hypoglycemia mm. hyponatremia mm. next uh, seizures mm. syncope seizure induced heart palsy ah. syncope mm. and even uh, this migraine with uh, weakness migraine with weakness mm. then um, sometimes a hemorrhagic stroke so, also uh, can be hemorrhagic stroke or sah these things can also be uh, weakness they can present. weakness can be there okay so uh, if we if in pre hospital scenario we need to consider the cincinnati score or the uh, uh, melbourne uh, um, melbourne score pre hospital mm-hmm. scoring system or the pre hospital ambulance scoring system this should be checked and we should uh, take because sometimes patient will be telling us weakness it can be generalized weakness or it can be uh, one sided weakness so uh, that is how we differentiate okay so this patient by the time patient is uh, in front of us patient is not having any symptoms okay then uh, so um, history wise is past history wise is a known case of diabetic and hypertensive and mm. also he has been diagnosed with af for the last 5 years mm. and he has been on uh, oral anticoagulants of it uh, warfarin mm. for the last 5 years mm. and uh, what uh, was the do- warfarin dose wa- okay okay uh, for the events leading to this scenario for the last one month he has been avoiding the warfarin tablet as per the history okay okay and uh, uh, a particular event was uh, well morning when he was having breakfast when he was uh, drinking chai he couldn't uh, lift the cup he was feeling weakness particularly with the right upper limb okay for that time duration and because of that when they were transporting him to the hospital by the time he reached hospital he was able to function his right upper limb okay so in this scenario because the patient was having uh, af mm-hmm. along with uh, the patient had stopped the warfarin mm-hmm. there can be event of thromboembolic uh, stroke causing this ti mm-hmm. uh, initially the risk stratification in case of ti would be done by abcd2 score mm-hmm. a age greater than or equal to 60 years patient mm-hmm. was 74 so plus 1 mm-hmm. next uh, b for bp mm-hmm. uh, on arrival hospital systolic greater than or equal to 140 or diastolic greater than or equal to 90 mm-hmm. his was 130 by 70 so Zero. Mm. Then uh, C for clinical features, unilateral weakness with slurring of speech is plus two. Mm. Only unilateral weakness is one. Mm. So here unilateral weakness was there, so one point. Mm. And uh, D for uh, first uh, duration, it was lasting for only twenty minutes, so plus one. If it is more than sixty minutes, it would be plus two. And another D is diabetes, so mm. he is having plus uh, diabetes one. So total it was five. Mm. We divide uh, depending on the ABCD to risk stratification, zero to two or more than two. Mm. Zero to two would be low scoring. Greater than two would be high risk. Uh, depending on the ABCD two scoring, uh, apart from uh, ABCD two, ABCD two scoring is not the direct risk stratification because there are many thing uh, important things which is missing in the scoring system. Mm. So 
clinically assessment is important rather than this. If the patient is not on any anticoagulant or isn't having antiplatelet or anything, then we can use this scoring to initially start antiplatelet. As in this case, the patient is already on warfarin and as he hasn't been mm. using, the ideal treatment for us would be continuing the warfarin. Yeah, starting warfarin. Okay. But if a patient without any such background history has come to our hospital, initially we would have to find out the cause of causing this, uh, mm. which would be requiring imaging. Mm. Ideal imaging, within, if it is within window period, would be the CT brain to rule out bleed and to thrombolase. Mm. But uh, here as the patient has come within the first 30 minutes, we can plan with MRI stroke. Yeah. Uh, when the patient presented, the NHS score will be zero. zero. So, anyway, it is not a stroke, stroke right now at present. So, and that's why we should consider MRI, MRI with, with… In case of TIA, uh, angiograph of mm -hmm. the cerebral vessels would be essential. Mm -hmm. MRI is more uh, better than the CT angio or CT angio. So, MRI plus MRI can be taken. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, even uh, to, rule out, to ruling out the causes of this event, we require ECG to see if there is any arrhythmias, AF or anything which can propagate this uh, thromboembolism oh. and other thing is carotid doppler to see any stenosis of the larger aortic vessels is required. Okay. Uh, in this scenario… An echo also. And if, an echo all, also. Um, is, uh, if at all the MRI, MRI angio is not showing any stenosis or the carotid doppler is normal and if the ECG is not showing any arrhythmias or AF, then we need to do an echo also to see whether there is any clots. Mm. Okay. And uh, the treatment would also be indicated depending upon the cause found. Uh, but ideally, if the patient is having ABCD to score of 0 to 2, mm -hmm. and if the center, uh, wherever the center is not having the imaging modalities, the advice would be to start him on the dual anti uh, to at least start on aspirin or aspirin plus dipyramidol. Mm. as the initial dosing uh, antiplatelet and ask him to visit any neurological center within the next seven days. Uh, mm. If it is more than two, immediate requirement of imaging is required. We can, uh, depending on the cause, causation, the treatment would have to be started. If the patient is because of cardioembolic uh, reasons, then better to start on long-term anticoagulants. Mm. Uh, depending on the score also, we can decide if it is 0 to 2, dual antiplatelet is not required, only single antiplatelet is required. If ABCD2 score is more than 5 high risk category, then dual antiplatelet can be started aspirin plus clopidogrel for the first 90 days and then continuing long term with uh, single antiplatelet. Okay, so um, in the ER point of view, uh, if the ABCD2 score is less than 4, what will you do? Less than 4. Less than 4, single antiplatelet. Single antiplatelet. Anti what will you start? Aspirin. Aspirin. What will be the loading dose? Loading dose of 300 mg mm. is given. Uh, 160 to 300, 300 mg loading mg. dose followed by? 75 mg OD dose. 75, 200 mg. Um, depending on different countries, the dose will be varying. So, 75 mg OD dose will be starting. Okay. Then, um, if it is ABCD2 more than 4? Dual antiplatelet is initiated. Mm, In that loading dose of uh, aspirin, 300, clopidogrel 300 is started. Now, uh, uh, aspirin, you can start 162, uh, 325 mm. aspirin uh, loading dose. Mm. Along with that, clopidogrel, what is the loading dose? 300 to 600, 600 can 300 be given as loading dose. If clopidogrel is not available, then we can start with ticagrel or 180. 180 mg can. To 300. Uh, 180 mg can, can be started. started. And uh, we will continue with aspirin 75, right. clopilo, cloplet 75, 75 or ticagrel or 90, 90 mg BD. BD. BD dose can be continued. Okay. And ideally, when should the neurologist see? If it is more than for immediate imaging mm. to see if there is actually in when we do MRI in DWI and ADCC, there can be even the ischemia, slight ischemia can be traced out. So, we can find if there is any starting like initial starting basis. Okay. Ideally, if possible within 24 hours itself uh, should be shown to the neurologist. Okay. Mm. Um, uh, then other things. Um, Echo to find out if there is any um, thrombus in the LEL which is being uh, propagated to the heart or mm. if the patient is on any anticoagulants like in this patient warfarin was started but uh, he is stopped discontinued so checking out the INR and readjusting the dosage. Okay, so if there is any um, AF or anything we need to consider starting on uh, warfarin also. Suppose uh, um, if you don't know ABCD2 score uh, other than ABCD2 score which all are the high risk factors for stroke? 
high risk factors higher age greater than 60 years and if the mm. patient having recurrent ta twice within the last 30 days uh, uh, ta recurrent ta within one, one month, month then then higher age with uh, weakness minor weakness persisting um, not persisting we persisting weakness mm, is there it will be so stroke only okay. then if at all you are doing a neuroimaging and if you are seeing a stenosis mm. more than 50 percentage it is high risk mm. and if at all we are palpating for murmurs and if there is a presence of murmur that also will be high risk okay and abcd2 score more than four mm. so in this cases there is high risk score stroke okay stroke in the coming days mm. Other than that, we can have some lifestyle modification like antihypertensive therapy when mm -hmm. the patient is already known because of hypertension and LDL, uh, checking the cholesterol levels and uh, uh, advising, advising exercises, stopping smoking and oily food, this kind of. Okay. What other advice you should give regarding driving? I mean, he can develop any sudden acute onset. Uh, yeah, so in uh, the scenarios, um, especially in European countries and all, they will have to contact with the driving and licensing agency. And we are, depending on that, they should be informed and uh, the planning regarding withholding of the driving for certain period of time uh, till the monitoring period. So, uh, depending on the symptoms, it might be uh, if only one episode, they will be asked to stop for one month and if the recurrent episodes are there, the, the, at least three to six months, they will have to plan on stopping driving. Okay. Anything else?